So, uh, auto segmental behavior one, temporal mismatch. And again, this goes in two directions where you can either have more than one segment linked to a single tone or more than one tone linked to a single segment. So in example nine here, we see a spreading process from Barasana, uh, which is an Amazonian language. Um, and this is in compound uh, noun. So why is some type of food item and kuba means stew. If you make why stew, it becomes why kuba. Uh, in isolation, each of these uh, morphemes has its own associated tonal pattern. So why is associated um, on the surface with a uh, high tone and a low tone. And I'm going to use these diacritics for phonological outputs for the most part. Uh, but for phonological inputs, uh, I'm going to use uh, <clears throat> the autosegmental notation. Um, and then, uh, excuse me, I got this wrong, first of all. That's a low high, not a high low. Um, and then Cuba is going to be associated with a high tone and a low tone on its two syllables. And that's how these words sound in isolation. And so the input here, we would say, would have to be a low tone linked here, a high tone linked here, a high tone linked here, and a low tone linked here. Right? So that's the input to the phonology as shown in 9a here. Um, in Barasana, when you create a compound noun, uh, the tones on the second noun are systematically erased. Right? So we would model this in autosegmental theory by saying that these tones delink. Um, and then they're just left floating here. They're going to get erased at the end of the phonology. Uh, what happens once these auto segments are delinked? Uh, well, however many syllables there are in the second noun here, they all take on the tone of whatever syllable was last in the first noun, right? So in auto segmental theory, uh, this is modeled by spreading an auto segment. That's adding association lines, again, indicated with this dashed line notation. And this is one of the very few primitive operations in auto segmental theory. You have delinking, which I've just shown you. You have spreading. Um, and for now, actually, that might be all we need for the moment, just those two operations, spreading and delinking. And that's going to replace uh, almost all the rules and the feature changing operations that you could imagine um, if we were treating tone as a normal feature. Uh, in auto segmental theory, there are no complicated rules involving auto segments. There's basically just spreading and delinking that can be conditioned in different ways. Right? Um, and so in Barasana, you can see that this high tone in this particular word that started over here ends up being all the way over here on these two vowels as well, single high tone, multiple segments, right? Uh, this is sometimes also referred to as tonal mobility, the ability of tones to just sort of uh, start in one place and end up somewhere really far away, tonal mobility. Right? Uh, here's another example that we briefly looked at last class, um, this associative prefix in Shona, uh, this was an illustration of von Meyerson's rule in, a Bant in Bantu languages. Um, and in fact, it's not just the associative prefix that works this way. It's any high-toned prefix in Shona. Um, and what we saw there, if you look at number eight on the handout, you can have all kinds of tonal patterns um, on uh, nouns in uh, Shona. I didn't give uh, glosses for these, sorry. These are different kinds of nouns. The first one is dog. Uh, the third one is an army worm, and I don't remember what the other uh, three are. Uh, sorry about that. But they're all nouns, and you put an associative prefix on them, it means with the noun. That associative prefix is a high-toned ne. Right, so that's the prefix. Uh, and then you put some noun after it. Um, and what the rule in 9b says, Oh, there are some uh, glosses here. So mwa is dog, uh, hove, high toned is fish, and mbundudzi is army worms, right? So these are all high toned nouns. Um, and no matter how many syllables they contain, uh, all of the tones in that word 
all become low when they're following this high tone prefix. So if you put in a one syllable word, and here I'm going to use little sigma marks instead of the actual lexical items because I want to show you how a bunch of different ones work. Uh, here, a high toned noun following this associative prefix becomes low. Right? So you get as an output uh, <coughs> name bois. High, low. Right. Um, <clears throat> if you put in two syllables, again, this tone can be associated with more segments than the segmental features themselves are. Um, and when you turn the high to low here, both of these become low. So you get ne, hobe. Despite the fact that in isolation, this word is high toned hobe. Uh, <clears throat> and then if you put in three syllables, same thing. Uh, where in isolation, this word is high toned, mundudzi, but when you put it following this prefix, all three syllables become low toned, and that's because, by hypothesis, the underlying representation for this word uh, has one tone spread over much segmental material uh, in a three-syllable word. In a one-syllable word, it's just one tone, one syllable. Uh, but in longer words, you have lots of different segmental features, right? There's a glottal fricative, a mid-back-rounded vowel, a labiodental fricative, a mid-front uh, unrounded vowel. But in the tonal space, or the tonal tier, you have just one autosegment for the entire morpheme, and when that changes, it changes all of the positions that it's associated with. So again, one tone, more than one segment. Um, interestingly, if you put uh, some slightly more complex words in this construction, as an eight here, um, that have a mix of high and low tones, you can sort of see exactly where the auto segments begin and end. So this last word, benzi uh, bunza, is high, high, low, high. Um, and here's what this would need to look like in our autosegmental representation. It's four syllables. Uh, those first two will be a single autosegment because they're both high, low, high. Uh, and what happens here? Well, the rule says after a high tone prefix, a high tone becomes low. Uh, but it shouldn't affect the rest of these because these are separate auto segments, at least according to the theory. So what should happen here? We should get high, low, 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 high. Uh, and that's exactly what we find. Ne benzi bunza. That's the output of this process. Right. So again, uh, one auto segment, more than one segment. Uh, there are more examples of each of these kinds of uh, autosegmental mismatch in the uh, Ziga textbook chapter that I've posted. So what's the opposite of that? Uh, more than one tone linked to a single segment, and that's what we've already discussed as a contour tone. Um, and so rather than just, you know, showing you, hey, Here's a vowel, and it starts with high F0 and ends with low F0. Therefore, it's a complex tone. I want to try to demonstrate this in phonological terms, where you can actually see uh, <clears throat> two independent level tones uh, from different lexical items, in this case, that both dock on the same syllable and create a complex tone. Right? So um, in Arem here, uh, what you have is a bunch of uh, verbal stems that are low toned in this case. Um, so, v, uh, queen, oh, queen, and zu. Uh, and these are, oh, sorry, lexically low toned. I was sort of pronouncing those high. Um, but you take these uh, stems. that are low toned, excuse me, uh, 
Uh, you put an infinitive prefix on them. That's high toned. Uh, and in isolation, this stem or in other morphological contexts, it's just going to be vu, or sorry, vu, uh, which is a low toned uh, single vowel. Um, but in this particular context, with the infinitive prefix that's high toned before them, instead, what you get is uh, a falling tone here. So, why is that? Well, in auto segmental theory, uh, this is modeled as one of the most common uh, spreading processes in tone languages, rightward high tone spread. And this happens in a lot of languages. Uh, so this high tone wants to spread as far right as it can, uh, but it hits this next auto segment immediately. What you end up with here is a single segment associated with more than one tone and you can hear that in the output as a falling tone. I'm probably getting that a little bit messed up. Um, and it's the same thing with these other roots here. High fall. Right? Uh, and uh, so this is, again, a case not just where there's a falling tone here. I mean, yes, there is. But it's demonstrably the case that this falling tone can be decomposed into an underlying lexical low tone from the stem and a completely separate underlying lexical high tone from the infinitive marker. Right? So it's really the case that when you put together these two auto segments, they compositionally make uh, a complex or contour tone, right? um, which is a little bit more uh, profound way of talking about the independence of these tiers than just showing that there can be more than one pitch value on a syllable. Because if all that I was showing you here was that, hey, there's sometimes falling tones, maybe that's not two separate auto segments coming together. Maybe it's just uh, a feature like fall, you know, uh, and it's associated with some vowel. Right? Um, but that can't be what's happening here because we know that the low and the high came from separate sources in these words, and they combine to make a falling tone. Um, here is another one, uh, reduplication with syncope in itsako. And this is actually illustrating um, several kinds of autosegmental uh, <coughs> behavior, but among them um, is the idea that when tones come together, um, they make uh, <clears throat> complex tones, right? So there can be more than one tonal auto segment associated with a single segmental segment, right? Um, in uh, reduplication in Etsako, so remember uh, reduplication is when uh, <clears throat> there's an affix, and I'm going to call it a suffix here, although we have no way of knowing, um, that is just a copy of whatever it's next to. It's called a reduplicant. Um, and in this case, um, the isolation form here was ikba, so low-toned cup. Um, and when we add these together, uh, there also seems to be a process um, in Itsako uh, where uh, you can't have two vowels next to each other. Um, and so when this happens, uh, first step, and we don't need to necessarily explain this part, we're not focused on it, but one of the vowels is going to delete. Um, it's not totally clear which vowel it has to be in all these cases. Is it always? Uh, yeah, it's always the first vowel that deletes. Um, although this is not the super important part. Once the anchoring point or the segment has deleted, uh, this association line has to delink. Um, and now we're going to have, uh, at this stage in the derivation, ik ba, oh, sorry, ik bik ba, and each of these will be associated with the low tone. There's an extra low tone floating around out here. Now with this word, because all the tones are the same, it's impossible to figure out what's going on here. The interesting cases are the two below this, uh, where we have uh, different tones on the first and second syllables. Uh, 
Uh, so here's the second example with house versus every house. It looks like reduplication is a universal quantifier type affix in uh, Itsako, means something like every. Um, and owa, house, is high low. So the input to this process, the underlying representation, is going to be two copies of this high low morphine. Uh, what happens, well again, you can't have two vowels next to each other in Itsako. We get hiatus resolution, that's what we call it, when you avoid two vowels next to each other. We've seen it several times in our classes. Um, and so this first vowel will delete. That means this low tone has to delink. Right? Uh, and what happens next? We have o wo wa with this floating uh, decoupled, delinked low tone here, and it reassociates to the syllable to its right, right or to the following syllable. Um, and now, all of a sudden, from these two totally separate tones that have to be specified separately in the input to the phonology, that is in the underlying representation, now they combine and there's more than one tone on a single segment. So again, temporal mismatch. This comes out. Uh, high, low, high, rising tone, and then low. Right, so, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, wah. Uh, well, I got that a little bit messed up. I'm not great at pronouncing tone languages, but it's high, rising, low, right? And again, more than one auto segment on a single segment. Right? So temporal mismatch in both directions. Um, and Ziga, again, gives more examples of each of these in the textbook chapter. So there are examples of um, <laughs> complex contour tones or compositional contour tones in Nupe and Lama as well.